Good morning everyone, my name is Sarah and today I am reading from the New American Standard Bible, Isaiah chapter 42, verses 5 to 6. This is what God the Lord says, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it and swear to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will hold you by the hand and watch over you. I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. Wow, that was quite short reading today, wasn't it? I think we could read it once again. So, Isaiah 42, verses 5 to 6, from the New American Standard Bible. This is what God the Lord says, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you, and I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. Let's pray. God, I want to thank you for who you are and that you created the whole universe and that you created all of us as we are. And I want to pray a bless blessing over Reynard now and that you give him the right words to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. I was hoping there would have been some German in there uh, because I just love that accent. But what a, what a privilege it is this morning for me just to share heart with you and, and share something that I think God wants to um, deposit in our hearts and in our minds. Um, but I want to take you back to a story. So it's, it was a, just a normal morning in the Von Sale household. You know, we were getting up and, and getting ready for um, what that weekend would bring and uh, Melissa and I usually got up quite early, back in South Africa specifically, um, because, you know, there were, but it was quite a lot more sunshine than what we have in the UK. Um, but we were planning on heading out the day and getting everything ready and getting Gemma ready to, to go out as a family. Uh, and we got a call. Um, and this call was a very distressed call from uh, what I this is a fake name, Gail, our friend, um, and she was asking to, for us to open the gate. Um, and as we unlocked and, you know, we opened our, our gate because we, we were uh, like in, a, in South Africa in terms, would, which would be a complex, uh, which would have quite a, you know, a, a, a medium-sized holding with a few houses on with this driveway leading to our house. Um, and as we stepped outside to welcome our friends, um, the sight we were welcomed with was not the most inviting one. It actually, to some extent, rocked me um, to my core because this was the first time that something like this would happen to me. Um, as we open and, and step out the house, our gate opens up, and our friend Gail starts stumbling down our driveway, weeping, with a baby in her arms and suitcases in her other arm. And as she stumbles down our driveway, she collapses in tears. And I, I, I can remember that feeling um, calling out to Melissa, saying, come help, come help, there's, there's trouble. Um, and uh, I could see her husband getting back in the car and driving off. Um, and there our friend Gail, you know, they, she's in our driveway, collapsed, crying in the middle of the morning, out loud. Um, you know, we, we helped her into the house. Uh, and, you know, made her a cup of tea, lots of sugar, um, took the baby, just gave them a safe space to sit and gather their thoughts and gather her emotions so, so that we can actually find out what was going on. Um, and then she broke the news. Her husband's been having an affair. And that just totally broke our hearts. It literally, it, 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 it just... Um, yeah, it, it, it rocked us to the core just as a household and Melissa and myself as a couple because it was, it was close friends of ours um, and they've just celebrated their, 
the uh, beautiful child's birth um, and what we thought was going to be a long and prosperous marriage um, uh, came to a grinding halt. And here's my question with that story. Um, you know, reflecting on that as we reflect on friendship. is What made Gail feel safe enough to, at what especially in UK terms, would, would most almost certainly classify as, as an ungodly morning hour, um, rock up at our house, rock up at our gate, and just, you know, feel safe enough to trust us, to help her and love her and care for her. And I want to suggest that it, that is friendship. The friendship that we've invested in and, and built um, the months leading up to this event um, that really showed her something that when I need someone, when I need someone to lean on, when I need somebody to, you know, a shoulder to cry on, um, when I need somebody, when, when, when life gets me down, I can go to Reinhardt and Melissa. And she was right, she could, she was in a house and um, it actually, it was such a story of restoration, how God moved with his grace and his healing in their lives and they got back together and, you know, God took them through a process and they are happy, happily married still um, and really enjoying life and experiencing God's goodness in that. Um, but that friendship part, those crucial moments you know, when we realize how important friends are in our lives. And that's, that's what I wanted to, for us to just spend some time on as we are in our second week of the 21 days of wellness. Um, and today we'll focus on friendship. And I think friendship is a key component to our relational identity, to what God has made us. Friendship becomes a key component of how we engage relationships and how God engages us. And we'll see that in some of the script, scriptures today. So you'll see in our, in our um, series verse, the Isaiah 42, um, the, the part that speaks of friendship is that Isaiah 42 verse 6 that says the following, I am God and I've called you to live right and well. I have taken responsibility for you and kept you safe. Um, and that live right and well, um, we do alongside people and alongside friends, companions that um, we'll see and uh, what we will share today. Now, friendship and the importance of friendship, I think, won't be new news um, to a lot of folk. Um, so... And, and we will have a lot of practical testimonies that flow out from, um, you know, today. But what I just want to spend, up some, spend some time on today and spend up some time on this morning is I just, I want to touch your heart and I want to touch your mind because although we speak of friendship, it can be very abstract. Um, and I, I think there's a lot that the world has to say about friendship and, and certain expectations. Um, but what does God say? What does Jesus say about friendship? And how does friendship fit into well-being? That's what I want to spend some time on. So I want, so I want some of your, your mind, your mind capacity this morning. I want, to, I want some of your heart. Um, and with that in mind, let's engage some of the scripture. Now, just to say... You're not going to get the notes from me today. I'm going to make you work for it a bit. All right, so get your Bible app ready. Get your Bible ready. I'll be reading from the Amplified um, because I just enjoy it. Uh, but you can read from, from any translation you like. But get that ready for when we hit the Scriptures. You can open it to John 15. We'll be spending some time there a bit later today. Um, friendship. Uh, a very abstract concept, like I said, but there's... there's uh, something, a word uh, that I want to introduce today, a new term for us uh, when we think about friendship and friendship as part of our well-being. And we get this word from uh, the Zulu tribe. Um, it's actually their form of greeting. Um, and I want to, if, if you know Zulu, um, I hope I'm not going to mess it up with my um, Afrikaans uh, English pronunciation of it. Um, if you're not, this is exactly how it sounds in Sulu. I'm just joking. All right, but the word is Saubona. Now, Saubona 
is actually the Zulu way of greeting, but it is such a profound way of greeting. You know, when we say, hi, how are you? Um, it, it's, you can't compare that to Sabona. This is what it means. Um, Sabona literally means, I see you, you are important to me, and I value you. It's a way to make the person visible and to accept them as they are with their virtues, nuances, and flaws. In a response to this greeting in the Zulu uh, culture, um, they often say the word uh, shiboka. I don't know if I, if I pronounce that correctly, but you get the drift, which means I exist for you. Imagine that when you are greeted, when last did you walk into a room and when somebody greeted you, you actually felt like they saw you. If you've, if you've got a toddler, you will, you will oftentimes experience the opposite. You know, you walk into a room and you say, good morning, how are you? And what you get back is, I'm hungry. Um, or, daddy, switch on the TV. <laughs> or, I want some water. And I'm like, no, no, no. How are you? Um, and that's oftentimes how we engage our friendships. Um, and the, how, the, the pressure and some of the, the influences the world, you know, puts on us when we look at friendship. And Salborna, the I see you moments, I value you, I take note of you, is actually what brings a shift in the way that we view. And I think it is a biblical uh, principle. The fact that when I see someone, when I engage someone, especially in friendship and when it comes to friendship, there's a real I see moment, a I acknowledge moment, I acknowledge your pres presence. Um, so a key, this is the first one, a key to friendship as part of well-being is Sabona. Um, and I think the, the lie the world oftentimes tells us, and the lie we oftentimes or can buy into, is the fact that we can remove um, who we are, the, uh, the I see moments to, so we remove our heart, we remove our vulnerability out of a relationship, and we are left with the mechanics of a, trans a transactional relationship. Does it make sense what I said? Um, so with that, when we engage people, when we have a Salborna relationship, a Salborna engagement, I cannot remove who I am and my vulnerability and my nuances in friendship. Because if I do that, it becomes transactional and it's left empty and devoid of life. And we see this in John 15. So let's open it up there. It's a beautiful scripture. It's where, you know, Jesus speaks of um, the vine dresser and, and our God the Father is the, um, the vine dresser. <laughs> uh, he's gardening and he's, he's uh, uh, grooming us and, and, you know, cutting and, and making sure that we are healthy and uh, continue to bear fruit, but I want to I want to pick the conversation up in verse twelve um, to seventeen. So read with me. This is after the where Jesus um, speaks about the the grapevine or the vine. Um, it's it's right after that, and then he's speaking to his re, uh, disciples um, and their relationship to one another. So re, let's read that. So verse twelve. This is my commandment that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. You are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I've called you my friends because I've revealed to you everything that I have heard from my father. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing fruit, and that your fruit will remain and be lasting. 
So that whatever you ask to the Father in my name, as my representative, uh, he may give to you. And then Jesus repeats himself. This is what I command you, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. And in that, in that John 15 bit, we actually get a few key points of this Saubona friendship, this I see you friendship that, that uh, is reflected and that Jesus teaches his disciples in that. And I want to I wanna highlight these three things for you. And then I'll also put the opposite, the, the mechanical, uh, the, you know, the, the transactional part of that relationship. When we remove the heart, when we remove ourselves, our emotions, our our humanness, our human beingness, if that's a word, from relationship, um, and what is left with the mechanics. So the first one is um, where Jesus says, you are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. Um, And with this, Jesus is saying, we need to see people for who they are. Can I, can I just say, in, in friendship, I think oftentimes we totally undervalue seeing people for who God has made them to be. And that's such a shame. Because if we do that, we do not, we do not get, we're not able to experience the fruit of people's God-given calling. So, for instance, if, if I don't acknowledge, if I don't see my wife, Melissa, as a wife, a mother, a worshiper, uh, uh, somebody with a prophetic gifting, and in that experience the friendship, the companionship that goes with that, uh, I won't get the fruit of that. And there will be a disconnect between Melissa's identity, in my view, and who's, who God made it to be. Um, now, Melissa's my wife, but let's say Ian. If I, in my friendship relationship with Ian, never get to the point where I say, okay, well, you know, Ian's a husband, Ian's a father, but Ian is also the senior leader, and God has given him an apostolic leadership position. Um, If I don't acknowledge and start seeing that in Ian, like the way God sees him, I will be robbed, in a sense, of what God wants to do through Ian in my life and in his and in the life of others. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. He's saying, you know, if you love, if you are my friend, you will keep my commandments. Why? Because even in friendship with Jesus, we need to acknowledge who Jesus is. Otherwise, we won't get the reward of that. We won't have the, the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, he's, uh, he's broken every chain. He's set us free. He is the definition of truth. And he gives and defines what truth is in every aspect of our life. If we don't see that, then obviously, how would we embrace and appreciate and see that play back into our lives? Sabona, I see you. I see you. I value you. And that's such a proclamation of value over someone, isn't it? The transactional part of that, you know, the phrase, he's got, he, he's got friends in high places, comes to mind, is, yeah, you know, I, 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 I see certain aspects of a person, but I, I, I don't really see them as who God has made them, as a human, as a child of God. So it, it, it only benefits me. I, I marginalize who somebody is to fit what I want. A beautiful picture of this is... Um, this was in the context of marriage, a marriage course, but I, I do think, you know, friendship is a critical part of marriage as well um, and can be for our friendship relationships. Is As we grow 
and as we walk with people, it's like opening a treasure, treasure chest and you get, you get new information. As you experience stuff with people, you discover with them more of who they are. And you get a better picture, a more complete whole picture of who they are. I'll sum this point up as follows. As, you view, um, as your view of your friend becomes aligned by how God sees them, you get to experience their God-intended fruit. I'll say that again. As your view of a friend becomes aligned by how God sees them, you get to experience their God-intended fruit. The second, part, uh, the second point is we need to show them who we are. Um, and I think that's important to say, in our wellness, um, we've got a responsibility. So I need to see people, that's my responsibility as a friend, but they also need to show. Um, they need to be vulnerable. You, you, I, I, and I need to be vulnerable towards people. Um, and in John 15, that's where God says, but I've called you my friends, and listen to this, actually such a... Um, a beautiful thing for, uh, you know, and, but uh, a beautiful and amazing thing that Jesus is saying to us. Um, but I've called you my friends because I've revealed to you everything that I have heard from my Father. Now we need to remember that Jesus um, stepped out from uh, walking with the disciples and the crowds and spent personal time with God. In those intimate moments, Jesus is saying to some of his disciples, he said, listen, I, I don't call you servants anymore. I call you friends. Why? Because I've started revealing to you everything that the Father has revealed to me. There's a closeness. There's an openness. There's a vulnerability. There's a showing of nuance, of, of, of virtue, of value. Just think for a moment where you've been in relationships, where you feel, you know, I see a person, but they're not showing me everything. You know, that there's, it's, it's as if there's something blocking me, getting a, a real picture of who they are. Um, or where you've been in relationships, where, you know, you've, you've shown yourself, you've been vulnerable, you've been authentic, but people have just, you know, worked rough. A friend has... Um, betrayed you or, or handled you in a, in an, uh, emotionally in, a, in an inappropriate manner. That's really important to say uh, and really important for us to understand that as we allow people in and, and people allow you in, with more intimacy comes greater responsibility in how we handle uh, our friends and how we respect what they invite us into. I would sum that point up, or this point up, as your wellness, so our wellness, will determine the quality of our friendships. Your ability to grow in wellness um, and grow emotionally and heal emotionally will start determining and either become the ceiling or the platform for your friendship relationships. The transactional part of that is if somebody would say, you know, your burdens is, you know, your burdens are your burdens, but hey, help me with mine. Okay? I don't, I, don't, I don't actually care about you, and I'm, I'm also not actually going to be authentic towards you. Um, but your, your, your burdens are your problem. The last thing... Um, and I think this is very important because Jesus repeats it twice in that scripture, is this is what I command you, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. That you, that you unselfishly seek the best for one another. You know, as friends, how great would it be if you knew that the people that you call friends, that walk alongside you, that you invite into your home, that you journey with, are honest voices that help set you up for eternity. 
How's that for friendship? It's not friends that's focused on flattery uh, and, and empty promises. But it's friends that say, I'm willing to show you who you, to, to, to see you for who you are, to show you who I am, my brokenness, my, my trials, but to seek God's best for you, even sometimes if you struggle to seek it. To encourage you, to empower you, and show you that friendship love, that God love in that way. I, I want to I encourage all of us as we spend time on wellness to make this a part of our thinking, you know. Um, a Holy Spirit inspired friendship will seek eternal reward for one another. I'm going to say that again because it's really important. A Holy Spirit inspired relationship will seek eternal reward for one another. How would friendships look like when we are thinking, how am I setting up Ian? How am I setting up Haley? How am I setting up Dave? How am I setting up Malcolm, Stuart, Jody, whoever you call friend eternally? I might be that harsh voice sometimes, and with harsh I mean just telling the truth in love might come across harsh, but I'll stay close, I'll walk with, I'll seek, I'll endure, especially when times get tough, and continue to encourage, encourage, and encourage. Are you following Christ? Are you pressing in? Are you experiencing? How can I help you? How can I assist you? How can I come alongside you? Because our friend is Christ. And he has given us the ultimate eternal reward. Communion with the Father. Father, the ability to walk into the throne room with unveiled faces. Come on. Surely, then he becomes the definition and the example of how it looks like. I want to end off with this. As I was praying this morning, I, I just realized sometimes, you know, we, we think tomorrow is another day and I can, then I'll start with wellness, then I'll start with this. Today is the best day to start. You know, and you start when you take the first step, not when you've accomplished the first goal. So may you in this week, as um, the devotionals come, may you spend time in saying, God, how do I get a spot of my wellness? How do I get the Salborna friendship, this I see you friendship? I will show them friendship and I will seek for them friendship. How do I get to that place where well, that part of friendship is engraved in my heart? Because I'm sure during this week we're going to have a lot of practical tools um, that will be given to us to help us with that and, and, and expand on this um, and set us up in that way um, to, to get you to a place of being um, emotionally well so that you can engage that. I'm going to pray for us um, and then we will we'll step back into worship. So. Why don't you just take a moment? Um, if you've if you've felt, or if you if if you've had an experience of either being betrayed in friendship or hurt, why don't you come and put that before God right now? Maybe you're at a place where you're saying, Lord, I can celebrate good friends I've had all along. Why don't we put that before God as a as a celebration. If you're saying, God, I need to reshape my thinking, I need to align my heart, why don't you receive that right now? Father, thank you, Lord, that you know 
You know the definition of friendship. You know what the Sauborna friendship looks like and, and how that would find expression in our day and age and our, um, where we are in our, our setting. Father, thank you for that, Lord. And thank you that you send your Holy Spirit to, to equip us and to lead us into all truth. Lord, I want to pray for people who've, who've been really hurt, Lord, by friendships that have gone wrong. Father, I want to come and pray healing over them. Lord, may they experience when your word speaks of that waterfall, the, the, the river of water flowing from your throne, Lord. May they experience that as grace, as healing water, Father, to come and heal betrayal. Father, to come and heal those deep hurts. Father, if it's a burden on people's um, shoulders, Father, may they just put it before you. Father, may, may, they, may forgiveness start springing up in their heart as they, as they release those people now in Jesus' name. Father, and then I want to pray with those, Lord, who are celebrating good, godly friends, people with a Sauborna-type friendship. Father, thank you for those friends. Thank you for those companions. Thank you, thank you, thank you that we've got those people that really encourage us to seek you, encourage us to press into what you've called us for, for to, that encourage us and walk alongside us and, and uh, uh, give practical help. Uh, on, to respond to all that you have for us in every facet of our life. Father, thank you for that. Thank you for those treasures in our life. Father, we pray blessing over them, Lord. May their reward be in heaven, Father. Um, and may they experience godly fruit in and through their lives uh, in a new and abundant way. Yes, Lord, thank you. Father, and then we want to just receive a fresh Lord. The right mind, the right heart to engage this week, to engage these 21 days of being well and growing in our, in our health um, and our emotional well-being, Lord. Uh, may, we, may we have open ears and open hearts, Lord, really to receive and, and weigh the ways that we think and weigh the stuff that the world tells us, Lord, in your word and, and, and uh, look at how you define it. Holy Spirit, I pray as people engage the word, as they engage the videos and content, um, may they experience how you just ignite and give new light and, 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 and give new insight um, into where they need to align where they need to adjust, where they need to redefine and really establish that in their hearts. In Jesus' name, I pray that. Amen and amen. Let's continue with worship.